It's the week that just won't quit. Let's step into the huddle. You're listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star app, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go Line Star Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now here are your hosts, fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Scott Bogman. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and welcome to the pre-snap right here on the Line Star app. It is me. It is Scott Bogman, and it's you, and we're recapping week five and hot-taking week six. Well, we'd like to recap week five, but it's still going on because we got Tuesday Night Football tonight, which uh, I'm a fan of. Give me football every night. I'm a happy person, but uh, it's been a wacky week. It's uh, certainly a a terrible week for the Cowboys, for Cowboys fans, and for all my cash game lineups that had Dak Prescott in it. It was terrible, horrible, no good. It's back-to-back weeks. I'm a mush between Nick Chubb and Dak Prescott. And I just want to crawl into a ball and sob in the corner. Uh, but I can't because I'm here for you. And this is a support group. And uh, from the wagering side, too, we were uh, not great. We were good straight up. Not as good this week as we've been in over-unders or against the spread. But that doesn't matter. Nothing matters because all that matters is I finally beat Bogman in touchdowns. And I won somebody some free stuff at Line Star. So thank God I got off the slide. <laughs> that is the one silver lining to the cloud of week five, Boggs. Congratulations. Welcome, Joe, to the winner's circle for 2020. Uh, it is limited and doesn't have very many people in it at all. So, uh, you know, congrats and uh, thank you for joining me here. And if just see the difference was the Pittsburgh game because I had Juju, you had Connor Claypool ends up with four scores. Right. And then Connor gets the last one. So uh, congrats to you. Big win. Very nicely done. Oh well, yeah, it's not even a big one, just a win. Let's just stay with a win, and that's good. <laughs> At least I'm less of an embarrassment. Well, hey, look, that... the first win to break the streak is a big win, regardless that's of true. how many you win by. So That's true. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so um, look, let's start with the Cowboys thing, because that is the biggest thing here going forward. What does this offense look like with Andy Dalton? The early look at it was Michael Gallup getting a lot of attention, which is interesting, and God knows I don't like to use that word, but I don't know what else to call it, but interesting. <laughs> And then, of course, you've got, you know, um, look, you've got some people saying that Ezekiel Elliott gets more of a workload, to which I say, look, the workload has been pretty good. I'm still worried about the defense. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm slightly concerned about CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper. I mean, Andy Dalton is not as bad as a lot of other backup quarterback drop off in the league. That is for certain better than probably 75 percent or more of the league. But we started for 40 years, you know, for Cincinnati. So (laughs) he definitely has never won a playoff game in 40. Yeah. And neither has Cincinnati in a long, long time. So uh, that that's been uh, that's been kind of nice to to talk about. I think 1990 was their last playoff victory. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the dynamic of the offense probably can't change too much. I the accuracy and the effectiveness, of course, can. but with the defense playing this bad early in the season, they're going to have to throw the ball. So while I am worried like you are about Cooper and lamb and Gallup and Schultz and, you know, uh, all of the receivers in Dallas, it can't slip off that much because they're still going to have to play point for point with most teams because their defense can't stop anybody right now. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bad situation. I mean, it just really is. And uh, it's opening up things for you know the Giants. Like, here's the one thing takeaway too: the Cowboys defense is so bad that the Giants put up 30 points and probably should have had more <laughs> because of a couple of the trick plays and things that did not go their way. Got called back on penalties and whatnot. So it was a crazy game. Um, just it's a terrible ending there for him to the well, season. And- just to preview uh, uh, next week, Joe, Dallas hosting the Cardinals at home. And I don't know if a team has looked worse than the Cardinals the last three weeks. I think if they were playing anyone not named the Jets this week, they would have lost. And they're two and a half point road favorites in Dallas with Andy Dalton as the QB. Yeah, well, that'll be an inter- that's food for thought there over the next couple of days before the wagering show comes out Friday. And we want to remind everybody, subscribe to the pre-snap so you know when the shows drop. We have our, uh, obviously, the recap show Tuesdays, the DFS preview on Thursday, and then Friday we have the wagering show. But that's food for thought. You know, I kind of like the Cowboys there as home home dogs. That's that's an intriguing one because you're right, Arizona's got problems. But from a fantasy side, what's the over-under on that one? That's got to be in the 50s, 54. right? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what. I a lot of I'm going right back to the Kyler Murray DeAndre Hopkins well, which which brings us to <laughs> uh the winning lineup of the week over on FanDuel. Uh Kyler Murray was in the lineup. Uh I had Kyler Murray. Uh Mike Davis was in the lineup. I had Mike Davis. Uh DeAndre Hopkins was in the lineup. I had DeAndre Hopkins. You see where I'm going here? I mean, a lot yeah. of the same pieces. The problem hey, was are you a millionaire now? Can I no, borrow some money, I, Joe? I, would, oh. I think yeah, I'd be sitting here talking to you. No, actually I would. I would because you actually be the first person I want to talk to because I'd be so excited. And then I write you that <laughs> check and I'd say, Hey, go get yourself something nice. And yeah. I'm Italian. And that's what Italians do. Like, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, go get yourself something nice. And what do you do? Yeah, take, take this. Right. God, I want you to have it. I want you to have it. That's good. I have it. <laughs> I'm already not believing this fake money that you're giving to me. No, no, no. I want you to have it. I want you to have it. No, no, no. I don't think you do. No, no, no. I, I, I want to do nice things for my friends. I want you to yeah, go take care of a couple things. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, the, the difference was Chase Claypool. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, when a guy is 05 percent owned, let me let me say that again for everybody listening: 05 percent owned and scores thirty nine points. That's going to win you the game. That's it. Yeah, that is going to do it. What makes somebody do this? It's just you know what. Look, Claypool wasn't bereft of, of having any upside in this game. It was just a, It was one of those. You take a swing. You like the rest of your lineup. And what did this allow him to do? That Chase Claypool, who was pretty inexpensive, I would say, uh, when Chase Claypool is 4,900, that allows you to go get Hopkins. You get Kyler Murray. You get Mike Davis. You get all the chalk we talked about last week. You get Travis Kelsey. You had Darren Waller in that lineup, which we talked about, like both those guys just being, you know, if you maybe using two tight ends. We even talked about Andrews and Kelsey and Waller and those three guys when wide receiver was a little meh. Um, look, we were also right on the DJ Moore game. We were on Chase Edmonds, too. So we crushed from the DFS point last week. I mean, it was kind of yeah. frustrating because the sites went down and you couldn't follow anything. That was frustrating. Man. Yeah. yeah. You could not follow anything. And and the reason why we can't look right now is because week six hasn't ended yet, technically. So yeah, we don't even yeah. have there's the a game pricing. tonight. There's a game tonight. So we don't have the pricing to even look ahead, but we're still going to hot take week six anyway. But I mean, going forward, you're Mr. Steeler. What's Chase Claypool's role here? And is it based on Deontay Johnson's health or does it matter now? No, I think I think he's going to see an increased role for sure. And this is uh, I've been mentioning this on a couple other shows uh, earlier this season just to talk about his season long value and stuff. I mean, the Steelers love him. Uh, they've had him involved in a bunch of different stuff. They love his effort. I mean, he loves playing special teams as well. And I think James Washington has gotten better this year. But it just kind of doesn't matter because Claypool's so good, and he proved that this week. I think it's going to be a lot of Juju and Claypool and Deontay, and it's probably going to be, you know, it's probably going to be annoying and tough to pick which one uh, moving forward from week to week. But I would ride the Claypool wave as it stands right now. So I, w- I would move him. I-, I would take him moving forward. And he also led in snaps a couple weeks ago. So there's a little foreshadowing of this, but of course, no one could have thought of four touchdowns. No, um, no. and then and, and but... you won't again. You want to, you, uh, here no. we go. Ready? Um, fun. Uh, you want to do a trivia question? You want me to give you a uh, multiple choice? You want a trivia question? You ready? All ready? right, let's hear it. All right. Who was the last rookie to score four touchdowns from scrimmage in a game? Was it A, Doug Martin? Was it B, Reggie Bush? Or was it C, Alfred Morris? Well, I know it definitely was not Reggie Bush. And I don't think it was Alfred Morris. And you told me this yesterday, so I'll say it's Doug Martin. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to play along. I know he did it. In the black, <laughs> I thought you he's forgot like, that you told you me. You know what? Here's the wrinkle. <laughs> no, no. Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush did do it. Actually, did he really? really? He just wasn't the last one. So he how about that? See, one. you learned something today, son. See uh, how many Reggie bush touchdowns were there in his rookie four. year not many right or in that one game that was it <laughs> you're not serious i don't know but I, you can okay. go back and look while we're pulling this up but there weren't a lot but he had four. yeah yeah i was like so, no way hold on okay maybe. so he had six rushing touchdowns and uh let's two receiving touchdowns so 50 percent of his touchdowns were in, in game. that game yeah yeah pretty good not bad not a bad day's work for a season but uh Alas, that's uh, that's where we are. And uh, look, you know, in, in terms of the overs and unders, obviously a little bit different this week. Um, not as much success as the last few, but look, this is the, it is. It's a long season, this so we a take weird our week. It was a very weird week. Um, this felt like week one this week. Well, here's the thing: when you had the Cleveland upset, you had the mind-blowing Miami upset of San Fran. I mean, nobody had that. 
So that that those kind of things, when you have upsets like that across the board, look, the good news is we were on Carolina. We got that right. Um, yeah. The you were on Houston. We got that right. Uh-huh. Um, and and then, of course, you had the massive upset of, of KC. When you have three massive upsets <laughs> like yeah. like that, there's there's no way your record is going to look good from a wagering standpoint. It's just not going to happen. So yeah. going forward, this is just a, a lesson to be learned. Nothing is safe. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. Yeah. Be careful. That's all. And any given Thursday, I mean, we didn't even talk about the Thursday night game, but the Bears beat the Bucks, and nobody had that either. So uh, just a, a crazy, weird week filled with uh, injuries and upsets and uh, good performances from players you didn't expect. No, it look, it was a crazy week of upsets, crazy week with the injuries. And then, of course, you get the Dalvin Cook injury on Sunday night, too. So, you know, what's great about DFS is you can go all in on Madison this week if you want to. And um, I'm sure a lot of people will. And I don't think it's going to be wrong. I'd love to tell you how much he costs, but I can't do that right now. I'm real interested to see that price, too, because that's against the Falcons defense. I'm going to say that one. I'm going to say it is 6,200 on FanDuel. That's what I'm going to say. And 65 on DK. That'll make him pretty chalky. I don't mean, that's, that's my guess. We'll see if I'm right in the next 24 hours. I think 62, because here's the thing. It's like, I don't know if they're going to adjust. See here, this is the things are very tricky right now because <laughs> normally you wouldn't have this extra day. So I don't know, and nobody knows if they're adjusting things on the fly or if they're just going to run which what was set going in where they just release it automatically because now they have more time to make adjustments. Now, if they make adjustments and he's 72, I think he'll still be chalky, <laughs> personally. Yeah. I mean, he's getting the Falcons <laughs> this week, okay? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, let's start hot taking there. Let, let's let's start this. Can we, Can we? right? Is it the Falcons they're getting? I mean, am, or yeah. is I, am I wrong on this? No, they, they're getting the Falcons, and they're at home against the freaking Falcons defense. Madison in play, Thielen in play, Kirk Cousins in play. Everybody's in play. Dan Quinn's not playing though because he uh, he was asked to leave. He was asked to leave the room and not come back. So will the Falcons respond to get a W the way Houston did, uh, Boggs? Or you think this is just uh, over before it starts again? I mean, the definitely could get this game because if there's a team that likes to play up or down to their opponent more than the Vikings, I don't know who it is. So. Uh, I think that the Vikings at home, though, even without Dalvin Cook, they hung with Seattle this week. Um, Their defense isn't as good as we probably thought it was, but the Falcons is terrible. Um, Julio still going to be questionable for this game. I think we see a lot of points, and um, I I think I think the Vikings are going to get that one. I I I can't. I'm not going to put my more of my Houston. Uh, confidence was that Jacksonville had been bad since week one. And that, well, I will say this, the, the, the Vikings are three and a half point favorites right now. Uh, I, I can, I can see the Falcons covering, (laughs) but (laughs) like picking an outright winner for this game is tricky, but I I, I can see (laughs) see the Falcons cover, you know, it's that first game where look, it was the coach the whole time. It wasn't our fault, but that only lasts like a week. You know, and I kept Joe's like, let's start with the hardest game of next week. Although well, let's start there. Let's, games start, are let's, tough. let's talk about Calvin Ridley, by the way, leading the league in uh, receptions of over 20 yards. That is an impressive stat there and doing it without Julio. Todd Gurley looked better. Um, and by the way, you know, also talking about, you know, what Houston looked like too. Houston all of a sudden got Brandon Cooks involved last week. So things that didn't happen, maybe Hayden Hurst can finally, maybe, maybe someone will see Hayden Hurst in the end zone and realize he's open, wide wow. open. That was wide such a bad open. Throw. I'll tell you what, I'd go back to that well this week. Yeah. You should, I, got, I mean, there's got to be some overcompensation there <laughs> where that guy's wide open twice and nobody sees him. I mean, come on now. You got to figure that out. But look, Brandon Cooks for the Houston Texans hadn't been used at all. He had more yards in that one game that he's had all season it was a huge game for him the Texans still not very good either but they finally got their first turnover by the way which is also staggering you go five weeks yeah. without a turnover and well, it was I not mean, even James turnover. Robinson just gave it give it away. To him. I mean <laughs> come on he really just like here do you like football I like football, like football. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean the only way that gets more of a gift is if you put a bow on it that was yeah. ridiculous Pretty much. Uh, all right. So uh, does this one get any easier? Chiefs at Bills. Let's start there. Thursday night football. You, what do you think of that one? Because <laughs> we're not going to. Well, that it. one's moving to Monday night football now. Oh, so right. Oh God. This schedule. I swear to God. I'm like Austin Powers in the third movie when he's trying to figure out time travel. 
Like I totally got <laughs> on side. He's like, but what do you mean, Basil? If you turn around and not, and if I go back to 1975 and then all of a sudden the Dolphins are not playing the Jets, oh my God, I've gone cross-eyed. I can't <laughs> keep up with it at all. It's very difficult. Um, but so this one's going to Monday. Then we got Texans Titans on Sunday. So let, let's go with Texans Titans here. I mean, this is tough because we don't know what the Titans are going to be tonight. We'll see if the layoff is good for them, if the layoff is bad for them, if they're the new Marlins, if they're going to come by and just make the playoffs and be awesome. Like, I have no idea what's going on with the Titans. But what do you think you're going to get out of the Texans here after the post-firing now they go on the road? I, I think you're going to see a lot of David Johnson, even though Romeo Cornell came out today and said that uh, they want to get Duke Johnson more involved. I, I think I think that this – anytime you have a new coach take over, and that coach is def- defense oriented, which, uh, you know, Romeo Cornell is, and it has been for a long time. And we may see this a little bit with Raheem Morris taking over in Atlanta, too. Their focus usually is to run the ball and play better defense. And, uh, you know, Houston definitely did that. I think uh, David Johnson had 17 carries. I don't know if you should be giving him that many carries every single game because he does have that horrible injury pass, but. I mean, look, the Titans are rolling before this COVID stoppage. So uh, I think I, I, depending on what they look like tonight, I'm probably still going to be in on them. And uh, I don't think I can take Houston uh, as it stands right now. So no, uh, I do sure. think Cooks, uh, you know, may be the number one, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see that turn a little bit. So it makes taking Texans real tough right now. Yeah, the Texans are just like, like we keep talking about. It. Like Watson looks good after that. It's like, eh, I don't know what to do. Uh, the Ravens and the Eagles, you know, Lamar Jackson's only the eighth ranked fantasy quarterback right now. He kind of needs a big game. And I'll tell you what, Fulgham had a good game for the Eagles again, but Carson Wentz is leading the league in interceptions with nine. So, you know, I just the Eagles are keep turning the ball over. Miles Sanders looked great, uh, you know, in that big run he had, but that's Miles Sanders, right? He has that one or two big runs that makes a, for a good day. But I mean, I don't know. I think I would take the Ravens defense this week going forward against the Eagles. I mean, with the way Carson Wentz is just giving the ball away, it's hard not to. Yeah, I mean, they played a little bit better this week. You know, obviously, I watched a ton of that game. That was uh, I'm a Steelers fan, so I was very invested in that one. Uh, so the the offense kind of clicked late, and, and I think uh, we'll see a little bit more of that. Just you know, passing the ball to the big guy downfield. Uh, in Fulgham just made a lot of sense. I mean, you know, this is why the Steelers get beat by Chris Hogan every single year, Joe, in the AFC championship is because they just didn't adjust for an entire drive. And Fulgham had six, seven catches of his 10 on that drive and scored the touchdown there. And then they had to put Hayden on him and five, eight Mike Hilton on him. So, um, you know, I, I think that the Ravens are, you know, they have, they, first of all, they have really good, um, cornerbacks but they're also going to adjust better so i think you're right this is probably a start the ravens defense and it seems like you just talked yourself into the same thing i just said 10 minutes ago uh maybe a little bit i I, I I do i do think that carson is playing better but but baltimore i mean just that line is so bad and they lost another guy uh, this week it is terrible is only mediocre (laughs) right right (laughs) you know like you know like yeah they're playing better you know, it's like, but it's still terrible. It's still not good. Yeah, um, very true. All right. Now, here's a fascinating one. The Browns and Steelers. Here we go. So uh, I, I know for you, historically, this is the game where you kind of put your feet up and you kind of, you know, get a nice cold one and sit and relax and enjoy the onslaught. But are you a little <laughs> scared this week? Are you a little worried because the defense playing pretty good. They're you know, they're giving Baker Mayfield a lot of clean pockets there. This is a big game here. The Browns already went on the road and, and beat the Cowboys. I'm not saying the I like the Browns in this game, but I'm saying I don't think you could feel like as comfortable as you used to with this game if you're a Steelers fan. No, no. The only reason the Steelers are probably going to be favored is because Baker is very questionable. I mean, he said he's going to play, and you got to take him at his word. He, he is a tough guy as much as I don't really like him. He, he's, he's definitely a tough guy, and you can't take that away from him. Um, but I think that um, if the Steelers can handle Miles Garrett, which no one has been able to, but if they can just, you know, let him only get two well, sacks and, in this you know, game. Is Mason Rudolph going to show up so he can pound him with what's left of his helmet? Like, uh, this is <laughs> this is a big day for Mr. Garrett to kind of get yeah. even a little bit, right? Yeah, Ru- Rudolph may call in sick in this game. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, the uh, yeah, the, there's a lot of young guys starting on the O-line for the Steelers right now, too. So, 
Uh, David DeCastro went down in this game. So the, the right side of the line is Chooks and uh, Kevin Dotson, the rookie. So uh, I'm not uh, I'm not real thrilled about this, but I think that's going to mean more running from the Steelers, more short throws, all of that stuff. And I think from the Browns, if you have Case Keenum playing, you're going to see a lot of the same. It's going to be a lot of Kareem Hunt and Dearness Johnson. So I think for sure that's a game right now that I would take. I think the over is over 50. Yeah, it's 51. Take the under on that. That, that seems kind of obvious to me right now. All right. Uh, Bengals only could muster up three points against the Ravens this past week. Now they get the Colts, another good defense. They're on the road. But, you know, the Colts' ineffectiveness on offense is really leading to them to bad things. They're leading them to losses. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's just it's terrible. I just went back to look at the game logs of Jacoby Brissett. He had six two touchdown games last year. You know how many um, Phil Burrs has so far? Zero. Uh, he had five games. But how many two interception games does Philip Rivers have? A uh, bunch, right? <laughs> More than one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's put it that way. He also had uh, five 250 or more passing yard games. And uh, so far, five weeks into the season, Philip Rivers has won. So I put this to you. If the Colts struggle here in the first half, is it time to go to Jacoby Brissett? I mean, they said they're not going to. I so. know they said they're not. I'm not asking them. I'm asking you. Well, look, Rivers should not have issues in this game. And they should run the ball a bunch, too, because if you just saw what kind of the blueprint was from Baltimore to only get Joe Burrow to score three points, I mean, it's play really hard-nosed defense against him. I'm, I'm like, afraid of Joe Burrow making it through the season, man. Like, that offensive line has a lot. And he... You know, he's a rookie, so he holds on to the ball a little bit much as well. So uh, I don't know. I think the Colts do win this one, but you never know that the spread is already fairly big. I think it's at eight points already. So, uh, yeah, it's at uh, the Colts by eight. I don't think I trust Phillip Rivers to win a game by eight right now, the way he's playing. So I'll probably take the the Bengals in, in this game, but um, I'm not uh, – I'm not confident T.Y. Hilton. I have no confidence there. I don't know why they won't just give the ball to Taylor 30 well, times. That's what Taylor, they should do well, this game. They're giving it to him 20. But the thing, the problem is this, Boggs. It, this is what I see with the Indianapolis offense. They can't move the chains. They can't make big third down. They can't do those things to get him more of the, the 30 catches, or the touches you're talking about. It's like they're they're inept. And unless they start giving the ball every single time, then you become very predictable. So they're kind of in a weird catch 22. And, and I know, you know, the Pittman injury hurt them. And I understand that 27th maybe- in converting third down. So you're absolutely right about that. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, 29th for the Bengals. So not much better there. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, but you know, Joe Burrow can make a play. And, yeah. and if he has to in this game, you know, that that's going to be a fascinating one. We get like, what's the line on this one? Is there an early one on that one? Do we got the Colts? Yeah. That one, one is uh, the Colts by eight. Oh, give me the Bengals in that one too. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's way too much. I mean, no, no way. Well, let, let me hold on one second because the Colts first in total yards on defense, first in passing yards, third rushing yards, second in points. That defense has been playing very, very well this season. Even even with Philip Rivers looking, uh, you know, I guess sketchy, but you know, looking at who they played, uh, it's. Jacksonville, Minnesota is the toughest game, but they held Minnesota at 11 points. Yeah, they the held the Jets, Bears offense, which is terrible. The Bears and Cleveland. So they haven't played a, I don't know, is this, is Joe Burrow the best quarterback they're going to play this year? It's Minshew, Cousins, uh, Darnold, and <laughs> so far in Mayfield. Maybe. It's possible. Yeah. It's not another realm of possibility. Speaking of the Jaguars, yeah. they're going to be at home against the Lions this week. Um, so Lions coming off a bye. So we'll be back on Kenny Galladay in this game. Uh, Shark left that last game with an injury. James Robinson was disappointing again this week. <clears throat> you know, I know the, besides a big fumble too, like this guy started off like a house of fire first four weeks in the last, you know, week and a half or, or I should say first three weeks in the last two weeks of kind of falling backwards. So I don't know if it's about getting him the football more. Chenault's been good too. Cole's had some moments in this offense. Minshew threw for 300 yards. So, you know, the Lions, I never trust them anywhere. They're going to have a lead in this game and blow it because that's what the Lions do. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts on this one, Hot Take? Um, I just said uh, I'm really excited to get Kenny Galladay back in my lineups. So, uh, you know, and, and interested to see how this running game 
pans out for Detroit. But yeah, I do you trust this game to hit the over? This mm, is what, uh what's the number? 54? Uh, 54 and a half. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think this is an over yeah. too. I do. I really just, do. The Jaguars offense has been inept. Minshew's been real bad. And Stafford hasn't looked like himself quite yet either. So I don't know. I think I'm going to take the under in that game. But like you've said, I've learned nothing. So. But the inept, well, the ineptitude leads to turnovers, though. And turnovers leads to points sometimes. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's it's sometimes the ineptitude just shows up in weird places, you know. And I think that's the thing to take away. Uh, Bears and Panthers. This will be fascinating because you get the Panthers on a win streak. <clears throat> that's right. It was that three in a row, right, for the Panthers? Yeah. Three, three in a row two. for the Panthers against the Bears. And Bears defense is good, not not great, not as good as they were a couple years ago, that's for sure. But Panthers looking good, DJ Moore looking good, Mike Davis looking good. Um, are you can continue to go here with the Panthers despite this matchup here, where maybe it gets a little bit tougher for them, or you think no, Panthers have found something here, and there's Mike Davis and company are still worth the look. No, I I, I don't I don't like taking the Panthers in this game very much at all. I think you saw, you know, t- uh, Chicago just beat up Tampa. They're going to have longer rest coming into this game as well. You see Khalil Mack pinning his ears back right now. And did, did you see the the uh, meme that somebody, I think maybe NFL memes made, but it was uh, Khalil Mack standing over Tom Brady. And then they had the bear standing over Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant. <laughs> like, I like that. It, it looked exactly the same. And uh, uh, the was Bears Brady defense. four downs? Was he had the four <laughs> fingers up? Or? No, no. But Leo was, surprisingly. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I think I if I had to pick a side, I'm going to take the Bears defense in this game. And I think what Matt Rule is doing with Carolina is amazing. And surprisingly, they've won these three games after McCaffrey went out, of course. But uh, I think I got to go with Chicago in, in that hard-nosed defense in this one. All right, the Giants and Washington. Uh, this is a turd. I don't want to go near this game. Uh, Jets, Chargers. Now, Herbert, man, look, you know, he's he's tied with Burrow right now in odds for rookie of the year. Just let that say. Hilaire is a five to one, and him and Burrow are two to one right now. Um, you know, it, it's funny that, you know, Justin Herbert coming into the draft, everyone talked about how he's soft spoken and he doesn't have great confidence. Like that was the thing that scouts and evaluators and people didn't like about him because the physical tools are there. We saw him in the Rose Bowl run for a million yards and, uh, you know, really use his legs to play. He's always had this rocket arm. You saw that in the Keenan Allen pass last night. Oh, yeah. He even throws well from a weird base. He had some weird mechanics going on last night where his legs were, you know, next to each other and spread out wide instead of driving the ball. But he just Oh, he's played great. I mean, he let's is, be honest. Been really he's been good. terrific. And he's playing against the Jets. And I'll tell you what, this is the first time all year where, you know, because of the schedule and because of what's going on, I feel really good about starting him against the Jets. Now, yeah. Mike Williams had a good game. I would make that pairing, especially with Eckler out. Um, and and Keenan all, Allen might be out. He had say, back and spasms Keenan Allen night. out. Well, see, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, what's Keenan Allen's injury? How bad is it? Backs are always tricky. That's never yeah. a good thing. But you know, regardless, at least you saw a great deal out of Mike Williams. The Jets don't have an, a defensive answer for Mike Williams, for sure. Herbert and Williams are going to be on my radar this week. And I imagine Herbert's going to be in that seven, you know, 75 K range or something, a quarterback in this matchup. That's a good, that's a good price. If he's like 72, like, like last week, the way Bridgewater was or 71. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> you guys throwing up 300 spots every chance to get speaking of 300. How about them Dolphins? Oh, man. Preston Williams, my boy, had a big game. Uh, the Broncos didn't have any game yeah, because <laughs> they played the Patriots <laughs> uh, or didn't play the Patriots, I guess, is a better way to say it. Um, but look, you know, I, I don't know. Does lightning strike twice here? Did the Dolphins get on track here? And does, does it continue or does everything stop in mile high? Um, I, I don't have, I wouldn't say that I have a ton of confidence in the dolphins. I think what they did against San Francisco was very impressive, but Ryan Fitzpatrick is very Jekyll and Hyde. We've seen him play great on Thursday night football against the Jaguars and this game against the Niners, but the game against Seattle where we're all, you know, uh, chomping at the bit to get him into our lineups and stack him because Seattle's pass defense was terrible. And, uh, Miami has to pass the ball and all that stuff. And it didn't work. So I'm not going to say that the Dolphins are trustable by any stretch of the imagination here. So I I do like that 
Uh, Drew Locke should be back here. We're thinking for the Broncos this week. So I do really like that for their offense moving forward. Hopefully Philip Lindsay can get back in there as well. Um, but I, yeah, I think I'm more excited about the Broncos side than I am the Dolphins side. Gordon, I got some love for this week against the Dolphins too. Maybe. Yeah. That, that's especially. That's pretty, yeah. He's like a low key flex guy. I feel like this week, Gordon. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, he wasn't that fan. The running game wasn't great against the jets. He had to have that big touchdown run at the end of the game to kind of salvage that. But he also, you know, works in the pass game as well. So uh, I like him if Lindsay is out for sure. But if Lindsay is questionable or, uh, you know, a game time decision, any of that stuff, I think I might stay away. All right. Uh, Bucks and Packers. This is the marquee game of the week for sure. Uh, Bucks Packers is um, look, Can here's the thing. Flex this one to Sunday night and not uh, have the Rams play the Niners. Come on. We would love to. I mean, the, 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 the what's a bummer is that I don't get to play Kyler Murray uh, in the main slate against the Cowboys this week. Kyler, so. Kyler, Kyler Murray. Oh my God. But anyway, here, here's a point I want to make, you know, the Bucks defense. I always say every week against the runs are really good. It's really good. It's really good. But, but running backs who catch the ball, and we saw David Montgomery catch the ball a lot on them Thursday. I will say this, Aaron Jones, and by the way, the running backs catch the ball out of the backfield a second most in the NFL for the um, for the Packers. And yeah. with some injuries to that wide receiver core, I think that trend is going to continue. So normally people will see Jones, they'll see these numbers, they'll see the opponent rank, which is you know a, a very easy piece of data and go, oh, I don't want to start Aaron Jones. I think I'm going to be on Aaron Jones. I think he's going to be my favorite contrarian play of the week against the Bucs. I really do. I think this is a, a game where they're going to lean on him heavily. It's on the road, and they're going to get him the football in, you know, in space in terms of, you know, catching the football and reception. So I like it was the almost reception. Like, it was almost like they used that third quarter against the Falcons because they were up so much uh, two weeks ago, the Packers, that they're just like, you know what, let's try some of these uh, RB passing plays uh, ahead of our Bucks well, game. Well, in all fairness, they had week. to. Adams out, Lazard out. I think they were also out of out of options. I mean, Robert Tanya had three touchdowns. So yeah, yeah, very, very true. But I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, the Falcons are so bad that the uh, the Packers kind of were able to install their uh, two weeks away game plan against them in the third quarter just to see if it was going to start working, you know. But uh, I. I this game is going to be a hard one to pick for sure. I don't know which side of the fence I'm going to land on because you never want pissed off Tom Brady, right? Uh, with extra rest coming into this game. But the Packers have extra rest too. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're coming off a buy. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I, I think I, Devante what's, the, what's the line on this game? Might be I, back. Uh, right it, now, it is I, the Packers, Packers by two. Ooh, Packers by two. Mm. Two and a half. Excuse me. 54 you know what? is the over. I, I, I think I'm going to pick the Packers to win this game for sure. I, I, I whether or not, wow, that, that's going to be this is another one food for thought. We got to really you know marinate on this one too. I, I think the Packers have played really well, but this is more of a test I think for them. Uh, and like you said, the Bucks coming off a, a tough loss here. There's going to be uh, some grudge. What do you think of Ronald Jones in this game too against the Pack? Yeah, you know what? He's looked great. I, I mean, yeah. look, I'm the biggest Leonard Fournette stand there is, and all that stuff. And maybe he'll be back in this game, but. Uh, Ronald Jones has really earned it the last couple weeks. And, you know, he played well uh, against Chicago, and that's that's a tall task. So uh, I like that we're finally starting to see USC Ronald Jones translate to the NFL. It's been a long time in the making, but it seems like it's starting to click for him. So I Yeah, like and it's at, the, it's at the cost of all of our Leonard Fournette shares, but still, nonetheless, it, I like clarity. Clarity is good. It helps all of us. And I wish I had traded Leonard Fournette after week two, but uh, here we are. <laughs> Here we are. All right, uh, Sunday Night Football, we got the Rams going with the 49ers. And 49ers are up against it, man. They've got the Rams, uh, who've looked better of late. They also then play the, uh, was it, the Seahawks and the Patriots the next two weeks after. That game, that loss against Miami, that's going to haunt them. I think it's going to haunt their dreams. Losing to the Eagles at home and Miami at home in back-to-back -back weeks, that is brutal, dude. That is absolutely brutal. Yeah, I don't uh the Niners just look like I you talked about the Super Bowl hangover coming into this season and everything. And you know, I, I wasn't so on board with that, but they look like hammered dog ass right now. The, the Niners. They got nothing on offense outside of Mostert. They got nothing on defense, especially in the secondary. There's they have they're playing through too many injuries right now. Uh Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't he probably wasn't healthy enough to be out there. So 
I don't know if Garoppolo is going to start or if it's going to be Beathard this week. And uh, I think this is the Rams easy. Um, I think the guys to start here are probably Cup and Woods and maybe Goff. I don't want to mess with that running back situation. Well, look, either. and luckily it's not something we have to worry about it not being on the main slate. So if you're playing right. Sunday, Monday, you can look. Sun, you know, this is one of the first times um, in a while where I'm really excited about maybe a Sunday, Monday because you got Cardinals, Cowboys, Rams, 49ers. I think that's a duo of games we can get involved with. I, and I, Bills, I, Chiefs. Yeah, and Bills, we're going to throw right. that one in there on Monday. Yeah, well, that's well. going to be a fun slate. We'll, we'll break that all down for you on Thursday. So make sure you subscribe to the pod and go get that Line Star app and upgrade to the premium products. You can get on board with us here over at the Line Star app. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter at Line Star app at Line Star NFL. You can follow us at Bogman Sports at Joe Pisa PS17. That'll do it for us. There's nothing left to do now except down, set, win. You've been listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star. Hit subscribe, drop a review, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Scott Bogman.